for you and for me. In eternity past, He made the decision to give His life for mankind. And He didn't die for Himself. He died for us. He was already God. The Bible says the Word, which was God, became flesh and dwelt among us. Emmanuel meant God with us. So, He didn't die for Himself. He died for us. We've been talking about what have we been talking about, Brother Tyler? Hebrews 11th chapter. And the first and second verse. The Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now most of the time people stop right there, but we haven't stopped right there. The second verse says, For by it the elders obtained a good report. How many people about got that memorized? You should print it out and put it on your refrigerator. <clears throat> Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. And I've told you over and over how important this is because if you miss this, you miss it all. The elders obtained a good... How did Abraham become righteous in the sight of God? By faith. How was Abraham justified in the sight of God? By faith. Abraham, Isaac, <clears throat> Jacob, all justified by... You won't find anyone in the Old Testament that was not justified by faith. Why? Because that's the only means of justification before God is through faith. The Old Testament saints and the patriarchs and the prophets of old had their faith in the promise which was to come which was the cross of Calvary. We today on this side of the cross look back and we are justified not by how good Tommy Willis is. Tommy Willis won't stand before God one day and God will say, you know what, son? You've been a real good guy. Come on in. No, 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 no. You'll get in by the blood of Jesus or you won't go. A lot of good people in hell. A lot of people that had greater works than you'll ever have in hell. Because their faith was not in the right place. The only faith that God will accept is faith in that which Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. He will not accept your faith in the law. He will not accept your faith in works. He will not accept your faith in your religion. He will not accept your faith in mankind. No faith, no faith will He accept or approve of other than faith in the cross of Calvary and the finished work of Jesus Christ. Everything in this book from Genesis to Revelation points toward the old rugged cross and the finished work of Jesus Christ. From Genesis to Malachi before the cross points toward that which would come that God had promised would come in the form of His Son, the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. Everything from Matthew to Revelation points to the cross of Calvary. Everything before the cross pointed toward the cross. Everything since then points back at the cross as being the only hope for mankind. Not works, not good deeds, not the law, but the cross of Calvary. I want to talk to you for just a... Is that too long of a review, brother? I want to talk to you for just a minute, not for very long, about the Apostle Paul and his ministry. The Apostle Paul, most scholars will tell you, and most Christians, if they know anything about the Word of God, would agree that the Apostle Paul was the greatest preacher of the New Testament church. That there has never been another apostle like him. That he was the greatest apostle that the church has ever known. That he was the greatest preacher that the church has ever known outside of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the greatest preacher. Amen. He's still preaching. But the Apostle Paul, they will, they will tell you how great of a preacher he was. How great of a man he was. Yet they don't preach what the Apostle Paul preached. In our churches today, you will find them preaching prosperity. Paul didn't preach that. In our churches today, you will find them preaching the word of faith. Paul did not preach that. In our churches today, you will find them preaching that you're a God, I'm a God, we're all little gods. 
That God wants you to be the best you can be and that yourself needs to be exalted. Paul didn't even come close to preaching that. But they will brag on how great the Apostle Paul was, yet they won't preach the message that the Apostle Paul preached. What did Paul preach? Turn with me tonight to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The Apostle Paul was very clear about what God had sent him to do. It was not to build a church. I'm here at 216 Hill Street. And we've been here for eight years this year. In August, we'll be here eight years. We didn't come here to build a church. We didn't come here to draw a crowd. And as you can see, we've been pretty successful at that. Those are not the reasons we came here. Those are not the reasons that we opened the doors of this church. We open the door of this church for one reason. To preach the unadulterated, undiluted Word of God and to lift up the bloodstained cross of Calvary as being the only hope for not only a lost and dying world, but for a church world that is lost as a ball in high weeds. That's why we're here. We're not here to expand and build bigger and find us a building and get us a, 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 a big fellowship hall and all that, all that stuff would be okay. But that's not why we're here. I told you before, whether you show up or not, I will be here until God says otherwise. I fall back on the servants that God talks about, that Jesus was talking about there in the Gospels. That will He find that servant doing, being faithful whenever He returns. Until God says otherwise, I'll be here whether you are or not. I'm glad you're here. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather look at you than look at the pews without anybody in them. But we didn't come here to build a church. We didn't come here to get a huge crowd and start some kind of denomination on our own. We came here to preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And that's what we'll do while we're here until the Lord says otherwise. Well, the Apostle Paul didn't come for those reasons either. You will not find the Apostle Paul building a big church. He could have settled down in one place Got him a big following because a lot of people thought a lot about Paul. Some people still had some some problems with him on account of the, the man he used to be. But the Apostle Paul was revered by many of that day. And he could have done different things. But he makes it very plain in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, what his calling was, what God had sent him to do. See, that's where we get mixed up so many times. We think that God, when God's calling me to start this church, He must want me to get a mega crowd, get a huge building, have all these fellowships and have all these activities and have all these... None of that has to do anything with the Great Commission. The Great Commission is to go into all the world and preach Jesus to every creature under the face, under the, under the, on the face of God's green earth and under the sun. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature. For it hath, I'm starting in verse 11, 1 Corinthians 1 and 11. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now he's talking to the church at Corinth, and the church at Corinth had contentions among them, just like the church of today does. They were arguing over things like baptism and you know who they got saved under and whose gospel was the best. Well, we got that going on today. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Paul asked the questions in the 13th verse, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Verse 14 says, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Lest any should say, that I had baptized in my own name. He says in verse 16, And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. What he meant was, besides that, I, I don't think I baptized anybody else. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Look at verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words. 
Well, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Paul said, I'm going to tell you what my calling is. The experience that he had on the road to Damascus, he's letting them know why God called him into the ministry. He's letting them know why. And see, Paul taught a lot of different things. He didn't preach the stuff that you're hearing today in most churches, but he taught, he preached some different things. He had different messages for different churches depending upon the circumstance, but they all came back to one message, the cross. Every bit of it. And he's telling them, he said, that he didn't send me to baptize, but he sent me to preach not with words of wisdom, he sent me to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. He says in verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Where has the power went in the church as we know it today? Oh, they'll shout, they'll climb the walls, they'll swing from the chandeliers, they'll jump a pew, but the devil don't even know who they are. Why? Because the message is not one of prosperity. The message is not one of feel good. If it feels good, do it. The message is the same message it has always been. Jesus commissioned His disciples to go forth into the world and preach one message. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now there will be other topics, there will be different things that we'll look at, but every bit of it should be founded and based upon that, His finished work on the cross of Calvary. And Paul said He didn't send me to baptize. He sent me to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. <laughs> For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above, oh hallelujah, to bear our sin and our shame on dark Calvary. So I'll cling to the old rugged cross. And that's what Paul was telling them. This is what my calling is. This is why God sent me. This is why He called me on the road to Damascus. He didn't knock me off my horse and blind me and call me into this work to build something earthly, to preach a message of, of, of uh, non-significance. No, He called me to preach the Gospel. The Apostle Paul was the greatest preacher of the cross that has ever been. That's exactly what he preached. Go with me to the second chapter. Just go down a few verses. 1 Corinthians 2 and 1. See what the Apostle Paul said. 1 Corinthians 2 and 1. Paul said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, Declaring unto you the testimony of God. There's a trait that you will find in the Apostle Paul that you don't find in most ministers today. Paul was a humble man. Now granted, some of his humility came from the fact that he knew who he used to be. Some of you might be able to stand and boast today and say that I'm a preacher. My daddy was a preacher. His daddy was a preacher. His daddy was a preacher. I've been in church my whole life. Paul couldn't boast of any of those things because at one time, not so far back, Paul was Saul of Tarsus. Persecutor of the church. In essence, a murderer of God's people. So we find, and we hear a lot of I, me, my, minds in the church today and a lot of preachers puffing each other up, but you don't find that with Paul. When he talked about himself, he did it in an exalting, in, in not, in a, in, not in a self-exalting manner, but in a spirit of humility. He said, when I came to you, he said, I didn't come with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Verse 2, I'm in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Listen to what he tells them. For I determined not to know anything among you except the law, except the rituals and the sacrifices and the, the uh, things of the old covenant. No, that's not what he said. He said, I determined not to know anything among you 
save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Listen to that for a minute. Now, I'm going to let you go here in a second, but this does something for me. Because Paul said, when I preached to you, the spotlight was not on how smart I was. I didn't use great words of wisdom. Why? Because I didn't want to take your attention off of the message. The message was the cross. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I purposely, Paul was not an ignorant man. Paul was a well-learned man. He was a big Ike, as we would say in Kentucky. As far as in the Roman crowd was concerned before he was converted. But he said, I didn't use words of wisdom. I didn't use the excellency of speech. Why? Because he didn't want to take the spotlight off of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. It doesn't bother me when I get up here on Sunday morning and I make a blunder. I say something, maybe I say, maybe I use the word, Brother Tommy, that you can't find in the dictionary. That's all right with me, because it ain't about me. As long as we continue to point to the old rugged cross, that is where the spotlight belongs. And that's where the Apostle Paul kept it. What did he say about sinners? He said, I'm the chief of them. <laughs> that which I would do, I wind up not doing it. Those things that I, that, 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 that I don't want to do, I wind up doing that. Why did he say that, Jamie? Because he wanted them to keep the spotlight, not on Paul. See, man will worship a horse cough drop. They'll worship a frog in the history of man. They've worshipped frogs. They've worshipped cows, whatever the case may be. Man will worship anything. Paul didn't want them worshiping him. He wanted them to realize that he was just a man and not a perfect one at that. And he said, I didn't use words of wisdom. I didn't use excellency of speech because I wanted my message to be clear that it was not about Paul. It was about Jesus. The church's message today, it grieves my heart to say it and it won't win me any fans or fill these pews, but the church's message today has, is about anything and everything except Jesus and Him crucified. You will be hard-pressed to find preachers Preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Not that they're not out there. They are. But you will find they are not as plenteous as the ones that are preaching something else. Something new. Got to keep the people excited. That's an old message. Everybody's heard that. We got to do something to get them excited. We got to have us an educated preacher. Paul said, I didn't use those things. For I was determined. I was determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified, so that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul would say, you don't have to go there because I'm closing. Paul would say in Galatians, the first chapter, if any man come preaching to you any other gospel than I preach, let him be cursed. If I come back to you Preaching something other than what I'm preaching now. Jesus Christ and Him crucified is the only hope. Let me be cursed. If an angel from heaven comes and preaches to you any other gospel, any other way than Jesus Christ and Him crucified, let Him be accursed. Paul knew where the spotlight belonged. And he preached the cross and Jesus Christ crucified for a lost and dying world. <clears throat> Paul realized how important the cross was for several reasons. One, the main one, that was his calling from God and he knew that. When you know your calling, you know it. But Paul knew, Brother Tyler, that the answer was not in the law. You know how he knew that? Paul had been a law keeper at one time. So he knew that the answer was not in the law because he had been a keeper of the law. That didn't do for him 
what this man he met on the road to Damascus did for him. <coughs> Paul knew that it was not in money because Paul had had some money. Paul knew that it was not in stature as far as having a position in the world system because Paul had had a position in the world system. But since his experience on the road to Damascus, he knew where the answer was at. That's why he would be the writer of those things that says no flesh will be justified by the law. That justification must come by faith and faith in only one thing and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So he knew that it didn't come by keeping the law because he kept the law. He knew it didn't come by having money because he had, he had had money. He didn't have none now. He knew that it didn't come by being religious. He was a religious man. Wrong kind of religion, but he was religious. He thought he was doing God a service when he killed God's people. When he killed those Christians, those rebels. But whenever he got a glimpse of the cross, he knew then that is the answer. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And that is still the answer today. That is still the message today, the only message that will set the sinner free, that will loose you from the, from the bonds that, he, that, that have you bound today. Only Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's the only hope for the world. That's the only hope for America. That's the only hope for you and for me. Only place to put your faith. That's the only faith God will accept. Faith in the finished work of the cross. Brother Isaac, come read your scripture, buddy.